What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 252 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today I want to talk to you about another weird western book. This one is Dead Irons. This is a four issue miniseries from Dynamite Comics by Jay Lee, uh, James Kuhorik, and uh, Jason Sean Alexander. And uh, this story is about these three monster bounty hunters who are being pursued by their human brother and uh, their relationship with their psychopathic preacher father. Uh, all of them kind of have a very messy up relationship with their dad and we could see uh, how that relationship uh, was really messed up and screwed up when these guys were kids and how it continues to be screwed up in the present day uh, so we are bouncing back and forth between flashbacks and what's going on in the present day and uh, unfortunately I do not like this story very much uh, I've talked uh, the last few days about uh, weird Western stories that I like quite a bit uh, this one unfortunately missed the mark I feel like and I think the biggest reason this does not work for me is that the artwork uh, is very unclear in this book it's very muddy. Uh, at times, it was difficult for me to tell a couple of the characters apart. Uh, one of the evil brothers who is being pursued by the good brother, uh, a lot of times, uh, the art was so dark, uh, like physically, I could uh, have a lot of trouble telling what was going on. I couldn't even tell those two characters apart. At one point, I thought that we were dealing with one of the monsters that was being hunted by the human brother, but we were actually dealing with the human brother, and I didn't know that at first. And also, uh, I feel like the writing is not as clear as it could be, uh, especially early on in the miniseries, it's not doing a great job of introducing all the characters to you and telling you who they are. Uh, as you get further and further into the miniseries, that becomes less of a problem. Uh, by the time you get to roughly uh, halfway through issue two or the end of issue two, it's a lot easier to tell, okay, this is when we're having flashbacks, uh, this is who this character is, uh, this is who the rest of these characters are, and this is how they're related to each other and uh, what their motivations are, stuff like that. Uh, the first issue is almost unreadable because the writing doesn't do a very good job of introducing all these characters to you and what their motivations are and uh, what they are trying to do in this miniseries. It should not take over halfway or almost halfway into a four issue miniseries to be able to figure out what's going on. Uh, when your miniseries is that short, uh, by the end of the first issue you should have a pretty good idea of what's going on. And unfortunately, uh, by the end of issue one, I had almost no clue what was going on. I knew that we had these monsters, they were going around killing people, and that was about all that I knew. Uh, it was difficult for me to tell whenever this book would transition into a flashback, uh, and that's also something that I feel like it got a little bit better uh, towards the end of the miniseries, but in the first issue, uh, it would jump uh, back and forth between the present day and the flashbacks, and I had no idea when it was doing that. Uh, by the time you got to the fourth issue, it was a lot easier to tell when we were in flashback mode and when we weren't, uh, but that's not something that you should be uh, learning by trial and error. You should have that figured out in issue one, because you don't want to confuse people so much that they have no idea at which point in time or space we are in the first issue. You want to hook people in your first issue. You want to get people interested in your first issue. You don't want to lose people in your first issue and hope that they'll stick around for issue two and three to see if it gets better. Uh, the only reason I stuck around was because I had all four issues in this book. Uh, but if I was reading this in single issues, I promise I would not have read past issue one because the writing was not very clear and the art was not very clear, unfortunately. Uh, it doesn't make me happy to say that, but uh, this book just didn't really work for me. Uh, I feel like the writing gets a little bit easier to comprehend the further you get into the miniseries, and I think that the art gets slightly more easy to comprehend uh, the further you get in. Uh, it's still pretty problematic, though. Uh, for example, there's this one girl, uh, I can't tell when she's on the page or when her mom is on the page. They both look identical. Uh, there's just a lot of problems like that. Uh, the two brothers still look uh, very similar, uh, even when you're getting into issue three and four, uh, but it was just a little bit easier for me to figure it out because the human brother was always by himself, whereas the other three, they were all together. Uh, but uh, the art, still not uh, very clear or incomprehensible, but it gets slightly better than it did in the first issue. Uh, overall, I unfortunately do not recommend uh, Dead Irons. Uh, this is something that I wanted to like when I bought it, uh, but it just does not work very well for me. Uh, now, if you like just the premise of werewolves and vampires and uh, uh, succubi in the Old West, uh, if you like that as a premise, you might enjoy this if you turn your brain off and just kind of look at the pictures. But uh, for me, I didn't think that this uh, book worked very well at all, unfortunately. Uh, so those are my thoughts on uh, Dead Irons. I hope that you guys liked this review. And if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I will be back tomorrow with a different video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.